Uh, hi again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Furman Athletics. Just like the title says, it's your look inside a particular athletic program here on a weekly basis. I am Dan Scott, the voice of the Paladins, and we are joined this week by uh, Robert Gary, who heads up the uh, track and field and cross-country programs here at Furman, and, and very successfully does so, by the way. How are you, sir? Fine, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, obviously, we're going to talk about that a little bit, but uh, you had a little little football action going on over the weekend, huh? Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, 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 took our son and uh, another uh, co-worker um, and his son up to the Ohio State Notre Dame game, so went back to uh, my alma mater, so it was nice. Thought we would, uh, thought we would win a little easier, um, but that's like most Ohio State fans, so um, great we got the win, and we're off and running. So. It's never enough, is it? Uh-uh, never. never. And, and, and as Tom Van Hoy always says, a coach he worked with said, I'll take 10-9 right now and go home. So <laughs> yeah. coaches versus fans, yep, uh, and, yep. and, and, and maybe you can – understand that a little bit as a head coach right yeah sure you uh you know you set a set a barometer especially early on in the season when you're always always making sure that you want to peak at the end um you know the truth is a win's a win um and you kind of get up and move and survive in advance but uh, you always want to have stuff to work on and things to talk about so well what what does a program that is coming off of its ninth consecutive conference title and and has done everything that you've done what what is there for you to work on as a new season dawns um, well, we always want to defend that title, um, you know, which becomes kind of harder and harder in both programs. Um, and then obviously trying to get both programs to the NCAA championships um, and then kind of making sure that we're always positioned to be a top 20, top 15, top 10 team in the country. And uh, there's always new kids. I mean, we have a women's program that last year, um, everyone we put on the starting line for the NCAA regionals was a was a freshman, you know, first uh, real real year. We had a couple of COVID kids in there, but that was really abbreviated. Um, and on the men's side, you know, we had some, some strong runners out. Uh, walk out the door and we're going to need some new ones to kind of step up so each team is new but um you know hopefully the goals never change for our program now that we've reached a you know certain level and 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 so you become very familiar now with being the hunted as opposed to the hunter so it's not anything that should catch at least your veteran runners by surprise. I would imagine that the youngsters coming in, that's something they have to get accustomed to. Yeah, I mean, inside the conference, you know, we've certainly, you know, laid down a, uh, you know, a, a, a tough gauntlet with the rest of the conference. You know, um, we do a real good job. Start to move into the national um, rankings, though, a little bit more, and you see obviously a lot more of the Power Five, um, you know, the occasional mid-major thrown in there. But, um, you know, probably always kind of consider us a little bit of an underdog. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think our kids, you know, really respond to it. Um, and at the end of the day, running's a pretty fair sport um you know and uh, uh we really want to try to you know get better every year well your men's program ranked 20th nationally coming in preseason uh the the women ranked 31st so obviously there's some respect there nationally for a quote-unquote little school like Furman yeah yeah and there's a couple other little schools you know kind of littered around I'd say probably our men's program I, I you know I'm really happy with that rank and I think it's good I think our women are really gonna really gonna surprise some people we have some freshmen that have come in and uh, lots of freshmen to sophomore and that's where you see a pretty big jump with a lot of people who didn't really know what to expect maybe their freshman year but go home have a great summer um, I can tell you from the workout we did today out at the golf course men's and women's program is uh, you know looking as good as we've ever looked at this time of year and, and did not give them a break because of the weather right no no, no, it was much more uh, me. I was pretty tired from the weekend and didn't want to go out there and get <laughs> soggy. But I, uh, I gutted it out and, uh, you know, drew on some Midwest toughness, and uh, everybody was out there, and I was glad we did it. Yeah, t- toughness in a golf cart. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, again, as I told him before we started, with age comes wisdom. And, and uh, you know, he, he has to be mentally in, in, in top shape to get these guys and gals ready to go. Robert Gary with us on this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. Let, let's, let's talk about your women's team, and it's highlighted by Beth. Bethany Graham's return. Yeah, um, you know, Bethany obviously uh, did a really great job as a freshman last year, um, kind of growing through the season, just got better and better, um, kind of jumped up uh, a little bit of a coming out party at the University of Wisconsin, where she placed, I think, sex 17th, maybe 11th, um, which, and that's always a real good, you know, kind of preview of the national meet and stuff. And um, so for her to come away with a, um, um, all-American certificate, too, at the end of the year. That's just, I mean, that's phenomenal. Um, obviously, we wish our uh, program was there. Um, they missed by a team. Um, but like I said, we had a whole, whole team of freshmen. So super excited about them. Um, we got some really good incoming, um, you know, freshmen, um, probably headlined with the distance area by Jenna Mullern, um, who placed third at the national championships in high school. Um, so I think she's going to come in and probably have a pretty immediate impact. Um, and then we have some other, um, you know, state champions. Um, we have another mid-distance woman in Cameron Winniston, who, you know, has 
cross country is not her super super thing, but I think she's going to be someone who can kind of contribute. So we got a great bundle, and we're actually you know pretty pretty deep um, with a couple front runners. You know, if Jenna's up there with Bethany and Madeline Cadeau, um, you know, has been right there for us. So uh, we got a we got a real strong women's team. I feel great about. So w- whether it's men's or women's, we'll talk about your men's program in a minute. Um, you know, obviously, I'm I'm more familiar with with the, the freshman indoctrination into sports like football and basketball, baseball, that type of thing. Where I'm, I'm thinking of, of football, for instance, where a, a freshman coming in from the high school level, no matter how well their high school program performed, they have to adjust to the speed of the game, just like a collegiate football player moving to the NFL has to adjust to the speed of the game. What's the biggest adjustment that a high school runner has to make coming into the NCAA? Well, I think on the men's side, obviously, you double the distance. You go from 5K to 10K. So there's that same kind of learning curve and, uh, you know, real jump up. I think there's not many high school freshmen or, excuse me, high school, you know, seniors going into their freshman year in college who can show up and really be on the national stage and a real player. Maybe one or two a year that can make that transition. On the women's side in the distance area, um, you know, you're just going from 5K to 6K, so you're only adding 1,000 meters. Some of the stuff that's hard to get used to, you know, similar to the men but not in the distance is just having so many people around you, whether it's in practice. Um, you know, hopefully we've created that culture and environment where there's, you know, a lot of depth and a lot of training partners, people training together. But you get into these races and, you know, the fact that All-American goes back to 40th place. Some of these, you know, women haven't been 40th place or lower in, you know, two, three years um, or something like that. So some of that is just going. And that's why we like, the, you know, focusing on the distance area and letting them, you know, experience some of that running with partners, running with people around them and doing those things. So that transition um, and that leap isn't as big a leap as you might think, but I think it's probably a lot more mental of just day to day. You know, you always have people around you and running um, as opposed to you being so far out in front in some of the early season races. In college, there's not many easy races anymore. And then, oh, by the way having to negotiate academics, especially here, right? Yep, academics, laundry, um, <laughs> getting around. You know, our campus isn't that big, so can't really uh, use that as, uh, you know, much of an excuse. But so many different things. we got kids that are getting used to the dining hall and everything else that they have to offer. So, um, yeah, there's 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 lots going on. We don't have a huge preseason, but uh, we really hit our stride in another week or two. I feel like this is week three that we've been together, and uh, you can see that the team's really starting to gel together. Yeah, as far as uh, for a distance runner, Furman's campus shouldn't be any problem at all. No, no, it's pretty, uh, pretty quick. In fact, it's pretty aggravating when people are late to practice, to be totally honest with you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, doing a good job. Can't use that as an excuse. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your men's program. Cameron Ponder had the year of years last year, uh, SoCon Runner of the Year, uh, SoCon Athlete of the Year, Furman Athlete of the Year, Indoor All-American. Uh, got banged up a little bit in the outdoor. How is mm-hmm. how's he progressing? Well, he actually uh, got a, a, some stitches at the indoor national meet, um, and that kind of led its way to, uh, you know, really aggravating the opposite side of an Achilles and a hip. Um, so we kind of babied him, um, didn't run him during the outdoor track season. He eventually had surgery. So he's kind of on the comeback or whatever. We feel good that he'll be back, you know, for this for this cross-country season. But he's a, he's a good solid month behind, you know, maybe some of the other guys. So it's going to take him a while to catch up. And he may not race as late as even the conference meet. But, you know, Cameron's a pretty – established athlete, pretty mature, um, and he, you know, he always wants to be out there with the guys, terrific team guy, but I think he'll, uh, he's going to need most of the season just to kind of come back, because we don't want to do anything to mess mm-hmm. up uh, his indoor season, um, and, and certainly not his outdoor season. He's had some bad luck, and I think he's poised to, uh, you know, really make a run at position himself at the NCAA championships, maybe even attempting to be an NCAA champion in the steeplechase, and you got to have an Achilles to do that, um, so uh, we want to make sure that we don't rush him back too, too soon, um, but then from there, um, you know, pretty similar to the women's side, we got some great depth and some people returning um, for maybe a red shirt season or something else. We did have two really good guys kind of walk out the door for us inside our top five and seven. So replacing those guys will be huge. But Dil- right now, Dylan Schubert and um, also Carson Williams are two kind of real front runners. Both of them were all regional last year. Um, and uh, we feel like those are two guys that can definitely be in that All-American talk along with Cam. And anytime you have two or three potential All-Americans, you know, I think that puts you in a top 15, you know, in the country, you know, just starting from that. So, you know, with or without Cam, I know he wants to make it back and we want him to be back. Obviously, we're better with him, but I feel like this team still has enough firepower to make the NCAA meet and finish top 20. And, and it can be a cliche, as most things are in, in sports and, and maybe even in life these days. 
But that doesn't make it any less true that when somebody like a Cameron Ponder goes down for any stretch of time, it opens up an opportunity for somebody else. Yeah, yeah. And, I've, you know, I constantly say, boy, we're probably on a piece of paper. We don't have what it takes to make the NCAA meet, um, you know, in the, the spring before, you know, cross country's over. But then people come back over the summer. They start to develop. Um, they start to get excited about, you know, making the travel team, going on to those things. And usually by about October 1st, I feel really fantastic about us making it through. So this is a tough month, I'm still saying, but I've already seen some people that have jumped up a bunch, and actually, uh, Colton Kempany's looked pretty strong in his opener, um, and he's a true freshman, which we don't, you know, always have guys coming in that can get right in the hopper. Is that a defense mechanism for you? Uh, it's probably just growing up in Chicago. You know, as a Chicago Cubs fan, it's probably uh, <laughs> linked linked back to that. So, um, just waiting for the <laughs> waiting for the sky to fall, but uh, eternally optimistic as well. So, Robert Gary with us here on this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. Now, you had uh, a a a run this past weekend, right? Yep. And, and uh, but, but you say that's kind of a, a precursor to what you consider your opener. But let's talk about what you just did. Well, I was real pleased, uh, particularly on the women's side at the eye opener. Um, we did a good job of packing up, running together, not going crazy the first mile and trying to keep as many people together as possible. So, you know, the results show one through seven on the women's side. I think we also had three or four other women within, uh, you know, touching ground or whatever. Um, and again, we start up here at Furman where, you know, we got classes, we got all these activities going on you know, tons of meetings for regular students, for student athletes. And so they've done a good job transitioning in. So sometimes we show up to that thing a little bit tired and running. Uh, on the men's side, we put a couple guys out there just to kind of rabbit through four miles, try to keep a pack kind of staying together, uh, maybe looking at a couple people that might be red shirting. So um, we really kind of circle the wagons. And in two weeks, we have a tremendous event at our stakeholder event where president of the university comes, the AD, a uh, bunch of primary donors, everybody's parent shows up. Um, and it's kind of the week, the night before our uh, first home meet. And I consider that really to be the the first time that we really run a full team uh, with everybody running hard. The men will just run 5,000 meters. The women will run 5,000 meters. But then from there, every meet we have that from there is really national caliber as we kind of get ready, you know, to head towards the SOCON championships in the NH2A meet. The, the the stakeholder meet is one that has just continued to grow for you over the years, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that event has really been, you know, uh, unbelievable. It's a great way to kind of come back. We give out, you know, championship rings from the year before, talk about the state of the program, talk about the upcoming goals. You know, I think everybody really kind of leaves there ready to go. And uh, we have a terrific event out, out at our cross-country course. Um, we used to host a high school meet, too, and we'll probably return to that another year or two. But for now, it's it's really just a great kickoff meet and um, getting our parents mobilized, ready for a ready for a long season. We have a tremendous uh, kind of alumni group and, a lo- and parents that travel all over the country with us. So it kind of lets them work out the kinks as well as far as tailgating and, and everything else so uh, that we can round into good form. Next week, the week after that, we head out to the Cowboy Jamboree, which is, uh, you know, a national team. Team, national meet preview where there'll probably be 10 or 15 teams ranked in the top 15 or 20. So it's a great early season test for us. You, you talked about all the people who attend this event and, and, and you mentioned donors, lifeblood of, of, of any collegiate program, lifeblood, he said, of any collegiate program. And, and you have been able to cultivate that better than, than most people with, with, what, with what you've had, but with what they say, with great power comes great responsibility, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have a tremendous donor in Chris Bork who really kind of spearheaded everything starting back in 2005 before I even, you know, uh, was here by any stretch. Um, but they, uh, he's, he's done a tremendous job of kind of leading the way. But we've had a lot of parents fill in. We've had a lot of other, you know, alumni kind of come back and engage in the program. And, um, you know, we're always conscious about it. Not You know, COVID obviously brought it to the forefront, but we're always conscious on, you know, we want to give a Power 5 experience, you know, um, at a little bit of a smaller school that's a little bit more tuition driven. But um, we've done a terrific job with our endowment. You know, I mean, it's up of $20 million. Um, and, you know, that rolls out, you know, a nice amount of money for everything else. But um, what I'm more like looking out at, too, is just seeing so many different constituencies and different people. That's why we call it, you know, a stakeholder, you know, dinner. All these different people are uh, associated with the program or fans of the program in some variety of ways through some length of time. But trying to have, you know, a smaller school have this much people horsepower is something that is just unbelievably, you know, exciting. And I think the kids feel it. Um, I think, uh, and I think we perform, um, you know, a, a little bit better because of it you know in any given year when you have had the kind of success that you've had and, and you're going for what julie Perry calls a decade of dominance going for your 10th consecutive conference championship and and continuing to to do what you're doing on the national level and try to get better there year after year but with that success how do you keep complacency from seeping into your program 
Well, like I said, I mean, the NCAA is always moving forward. They're always, you know, in all sports, seems like things get, you know, tougher and tougher, um, bigger and bigger, better and better. Um, and that's kind of how we, you know, kind of continue to think. You know, we really love, you know, we really push the idea of having a very combined program. I know that would probably be pretty natural with my wife, um, you know, kind of really being the point coach on the women's side of things. But, um, you know, there's always goals. I mean, that's one of the weird thing about our sport. You know, you want kids to feel like they've achieved stuff, that they're excited about it. But the fact is, you can always run a second better. You can always place a little bit higher. You know, there's always this ability to push yourself. And when everybody's thinking like that individually, and then all of a sudden we start to put them into collective goals, um, you know, there's always stuff to get at after. And like I said earlier, it's a new batch of kids all the time, people that were always looking for these jump ups of development. When there's competition like there is inside the Gary House itself, it, it, it can't help but <laughs> permeate its way out into the programs, right? Yeah, well, I, yeah, we really try to, uh, you know, Rita's <laughs> just as excited about the men's program as, <laughs> as I am about the women's. It's much more uh, us kind of taking on everybody, you know, probably more so together. But yeah, I probably have a little bit more vested, vested interest in my wife's uh, job than maybe some other husbands, I would imagine. So. Yeah, well, it's yeah. always better in our house when both programs are killing it. So. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Yeah. We've, we've all heard that, uh, that and it, just add that on to it uh, that, that uh, obviously would be an issue. So um, the, the stakeholder event is the next big thing on the calendar, mm-hmm. right? Yep. What, what, where are some of the other places that you're going to be running? You're talking about competing at a national level. Where are some of the other places you're going to be competing? Uh, well, the, uh, like I said, the weekend after our um, home meet, uh, we go down to Oklahoma State, um, and we're going to take the men's program there, and that's where the NC2A championships are. So you got a lot of teams coming from all over the country to preview the course um, and you know uh, get to compete against each other. So that's a real big break. The next week, we'll take everybody who didn't go there, including the entirety of our women's program, to the Louisville meet, and that's where the NC2A regional championships uh, you know, are being held. And then we have both programs meet up to go to Wisconsin, which is one of, if not the biggest invitational in the country, which it's a great preview for us. Two weeks later is the SOCON Championships. Two weeks after that is the NCAA Regional Qualifier. So not a ton of meets, you know, as we go. And that's why I mentioned, you know, how important days like uh, today are. We're out at the golf course. It's a little bit rainy. We got guys going up against each other. Women are out there doing mile repeats as well. Um, so we get a lot of stuff done in training. A little bit different than high school. We're a little bit more kind of compete every other weekend. But it's all based on, you know, really trying to make sure that come championship season, our team is healthy and rounded into form. And we're, uh, you know, inside the top 20 in the country so we can make the national meet and make some noise with both programs when you don't have that many opportunities for actual competition against other collegiate programs i would imagine that makes those opportunities that much more precious absolutely and uh, i mean there's probably not a bigger premium placed on being ready to go at the right time you know it's not like a you know sometimes a football season you gotta be ready every saturday um you know we're kind of every other and we're building into it and um just being ready to go on the most right day um and being the most right um and being at your absolute best that's something that we've really prided ourselves in our program we've worked back from the regional championships now where the you know the program's good enough now where we feel like we can really work back from championship season like a lot of other top 20 teams in the country so a lot of these smaller meets i should say um even though they're big invitationals are really just kind of process goals good getting a good look at people seeing who's going to be inside our top nine and then down to only our top seven so you know they're they're super important uh we learn things from them but the fact of the matter is uh, no matter how good or how bad you got to show up at the end of the season you know to be able to advance on sounds like another fun year is mm-hmm. is yep. opening up for you well it's not fun right now right now it's uh <laughs> anxious but uh there's some great fun in the anxiousness i, I would say it's always fun when you look back at the oh, success yeah. though right absolutely yep. all right so the, the date uh, of the stakeholder event and the and the first meet we'd like to have people come out and watch it if possible yep uh friday's our stakeholder event that's uh you know the 16th and then the 17th uh the women are going to race at 9 10 and the men are going to race at 10 o'clock um, both are running 5ks very viewer accessible uh it's a mile loop um so you can't uh i have walked back and forth i don't do any running at this meet at all and i get to see them probably eight or nine times kind of come through and uh, it's a tight little schedule, a small meet. Um, you know, I think there's nine teams total coming. Um, we got Wake Forest, Clemson, some other local meet uh, programs coming as well. So a uh, great opportunity. Enter by the lake. Admission is free, um, and it's a nice way to kind of kick off the morning for an hour and a half. A good way to, as you say, kick off your season mm-hmm. Yep, and get, and get ready to roll. It'll be good to catch up with you again. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate right. it. And I uh, hope that Cameron gets back sooner rather yep. than later. He's been going good. Just got to wait and see. Is he ready to run a you know a full 8K or full 10K soon? So we'll yeah. see. I, I'm, I'm sure it'll happen sooner rather than later. This has been Inside Furman Athletics. Hope that you have enjoyed our conversation with Robert Gary. We'll be back again next week with another edition and look forward to having you with us then. Until then, for Robert, I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you and so long, everybody. Mm-hmm.